Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto and I'm a photographer. And in this video I'm going to compare three raw developers. DxO Photolab 6 Elite, Lightroom and Luminar Neo. And why these three? Well, simply because I happen to have all of them on my laptop. No other reason. I'm of course using the latest version of each app at the time of recording this video. And I'm only using the basic raw processing tools. I'm not using in this video, I'm not using any of the special effects like sky replacement or those kinds of effects because I hardly ever use them in my photography. I'm more interested to see how each of these apps fit into my kind of workflow and what kind of results I get and how easy or difficult it is to get the results that, I, that I'm looking for. This is also not going to be any kind of tutorial. I'm not going to go very deep into processing details with every app. I'm just sharing my uh, impressions and of course I'm going to share the results I get with every app. And please also remember that this is only my opinion, only one person's opinion. And there is no one single best way to process raw pictures. Your workflow may be different from mine, but we can both still be happy with the results that we get. This video is divided in four segments and I'll put the timestamps down below so you can skip to the part that you are interested in. The first part is the tonality, how easy it is to get the results I want on each app. The second segment is noise suppression, how these apps handle high ISO noise. And the third segment is lens corrections. Lens corrections are part of lens design these days, so it's important to see how these apps handle lens corrections. And in the fourth segment I'm going to share some of my thoughts on what is important in a raw developer and what is not. Let's get started. Okay, number one, tonality and how easy it is to get the results I want. I'm using this photo from my Sony ZV-1 as an example because it's a small sensor camera and it has less dynamic range than say full frame camera. And this picture has high contrast, the lower right corner is really bright and the background is really dark. So it's a little bit uh, challenging photo for a raw processor. Oh yes, one more thing. I'm not trying to match the results between these apps. I'm trying to get the result that is pleasing to my eyes and I'm trying to work the way that is somehow natural to each app. I'm going to put affiliate links down below for DxO Photolab 6 and Luminar Neo, just in case you got interested and you feel sudden urge to purchase some of these apps, please use the links down below and you'll support my channel at the same time. All right, here's the picture in Lightroom as it came from the camera. I'm going to first apply camera matching profile to this picture and one of the upsides with Lightroom is that it offers camera matching profiles to pretty much every camera. This picture has motion blur in some parts of the frame because my shutter speed was 1 30th of a second and the person was moving a little bit but that doesn't bother me. I really like the picture and I like also the result that I get from Lightroom. I find Lightroom interface simple and logical. All the basic sliders are in one group and it's relatively easy to dial in all those basic settings. And the next is Luminar Neo and here is the picture straight from the camera and the first thing you'll notice is that the lens correction profile is not applied automatically. So what I'm going to do first is to check the auto distortion correction and as you can see it does not fully correct the distortions and I'll get back to this a little bit later in this video. But now let's see how we can get the tonality the way we like or the way I like. The user interface in Luminar Neo is 
similar to Lightroom and I find it quite easy to work with the sliders and find all the necessary sliders that I need for my picture. One downside is that Luminar Neo offers limited amount of camera matching profiles and for example for this picture there is no camera matching color profile available. And the next is DxO Photolab 6 and here is the picture straight from the camera and as you can see also in this case lens correction profile is not automatically applied. So first thing I'm going to apply that and uh, then I'm going to apply camera matching profile and one of the great things with DxO Photolab is that you can use pretty much any camera color profile to pretty much any camera. So for example for this Sony picture I can choose Canon color profile or Nikon or Olympus color profile or pretty much any camera profile and I think that is really nice if you happen to like uh, for example Canon colors you can apply them to this Sony picture. I find Photolab user interface slightly more complicated than the other two. First of all some of the settings are grayed out by default and there are so many sliders and settings that it can be a little bit overwhelming but once you find the right uh, sliders and settings you can get really nice results with photo lab. I think I slightly prefer what I get from Lightroom and uh, also the result from photo lab 6 is not bad. The result from Luminar Neo is the least pleasing to my eyes but it's still not bad. Number two, noise suppression. I'm gonna use this picture from my Ricoh GR3X camera shot at ISO 6400. The picture is a little bit dark so it's going to need some exposure boost in post and that is going to increase the noise levels even further. So I think this is a good test picture here. I'm gonna start with Lightroom and the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, add uh, about a stop and a third exposure compensation and then I'm gonna use some of the other basic sliders to make the picture look the way I want it to look. And then I'm gonna go down to the details uh, section in Lightroom and uh, apply some luminance noise reduction. And it's quite surprising how well Lightroom handles this picture because Lightroom generally, I guess, is not considered the best tool for noise suppression. But if I push the slider far enough, I can pretty much remove all the noise altogether. It certainly looks impressive. I'd probably like to preserve some of the noise because it looks better that way to my eyes. But you can certainly remove a lot of noise in Lightroom without sacrificing too much of the sharpness if you just experiment with the sliders. I think the problem with Lightroom is that it does not offer any automatic or semi-automatic tools for noise suppression and uh, that's why some uh, users may find it difficult to use the noise reduction tools in Lightroom because they are all manual. The next is Lightroom Neo and I started with similar basic settings as I studied with Lightroom before I started applying noise reduction to this picture. First I'm gonna use the standard noise reduction tools in Luminar Neo. I'm just gonna push the luminosity noise reduction slider all the way to the right and let's see what it does. It does a pretty good job. There is still some noise visible but it's not too bad. However the shirt, the dark shirt, doesn't look clean, it looks blotchy and not as uh, clean or detailed as in Lightroom. But Luminar also offers an extra add-on for $39. It's called Noiseless and it is supposed to be more effective in reducing noise or removing noise. And uh, the app recommends me to use high setting for this picture, so that's what I'm going to do and let's see the results. Now the noise is pretty much gone but there still is a reasonable amount of sharpness left or detail but again the dark shirt looks kind of ugly compared to Lightroom 
it's blotchy and uh, pretty much all the shadow detail is gone. So it looks like Luminar Neo can't handle noise as well as Lightroom based on this experiment. The next is Photolab 6 and after applying some of the basic settings to get the tonality right, I applied deep prime noise reduction to this picture and at default settings it looks really really nice and clean, maybe even a little bit too clean to my taste, but Photolab can remove noise very effectively without destroying sharpness or detail. It's too bad though that you can't preview Deep Prime in the main window. You only have this tiny little window for previewing Deep Prime before applying it. But nonetheless, the end result looks really clean and good and detailed, and that's what counts, of course. I think Photolab does the best job here, then Lightroom and the last is Luminar Neo and I'm a little bit disappointed with Luminar Neo regarding noise uh, reduction or noise suppression at least with this particular picture. Number three, lens corrections. I think lens corrections are important part of raw processing because lens corrections these days are part of lens design and if your raw developer cannot handle lens corrections properly your end result your outcome will suffer my first test picture here is from my sony zv1 camera shot at the widest zoom setting it has quite heavy distortions and therefore it's a good sample picture here but I'll have a couple of more samples too from different cameras and lenses because it looks like these three apps all handle lens corrections quite differently. There are some significant differences. Lightroom is probably the most compatible here. It supports pretty much every lens ever manufactured and it follows manufacturer's corrections. So you'll get the same exact framing that you saw in your camera when you took the picture. One downside with Lightroom is that with many cameras there is no option to turn off the lens corrections. For example with Micro Four Thirds cameras and also with this Sony ZV-1 I can't turn off the lens corrections. And I think it would be nice to be able to choose whether you want those corrections in or not. For example with some landscape pictures you might not need any corrections because there are no straight lines in the picture. Luminar Neo is by far the worst here because there are no customized lens profiles at all. And the auto correction does not work that well. As you can see in this picture, the buildings still look like bananas even though I applied auto correction. I can manually fine tune it, but then there is a massive crop in the picture. DxO Photolab is by far the best here. It offers less crop and all in all the results are superior compared to the two other apps. You can also choose not to keep the picture's original aspect ratio and if you choose this option in this case you'll get more than 1.6 more megapixels in your picture and that's quite a lot and you'll see much wider horizontal angle of view from your lens if you choose that. And here's one more picture from the Olympus EM1 Mark III camera and the 17mm f1.8 lens. And again here Lightroom corrections are exactly the same as in-camera corrections. Luminar Neo auto correction works quite well but there is more crop than in the Lightroom picture and as expected Photolab does the best job with the least crop and uh, the best corrections overall. Before I go into the fourth section, let me quickly recap the upsides and downsides of each of these apps. Lightroom upsides are, in my opinion, simple workflow, camera profiles, lots of camera profiles, and compatibility, especially with older cameras. I have this picture from 2002 taken on my Nikon D1X camera and Lightroom is the only one of these apps that can handle this file. 
So if you own old cameras and you wish to process those raw files, then Lightroom is probably the best choice. There's only one downside in Lightroom, in my opinion, and it is the lack of automatic or semi-automatic uh, features for noise suppression, sharpening, and uh, those things. Luminar upsides are fairly simple raw workflow and the very useful automatic or semi-automatic features that can help you to get the results you want. Luminar downsides, in my opinion, are lens corrections, and I really hope they can fix that in the future. Then the noise reduction is not as effective or good as uh, with the other apps here, and also the lack of camera matching profiles is a downside. DxO Photolab upsides are excellent noise suppression and uh, sharpening. Also the lens corrections and the lens profiles are superior to pretty much any other application and there are a lot of automatic or semi-automatic features that can help you to get the results you want and also there's a very good support for camera matching color profiles. DxO Photolab downsides are a little bit convoluted raw workflow. It can be a little bit overwhelming and uh, it can be a little bit difficult to find the right sliders. And another downside is the lack of a proper preview for deep prime noise suppression and sharpening tool. Number four, what is important and what matters with the raw developer? I think all these three raw processor raw developers can work as long as you know what you're doing. It's a bit the same thing with cameras. It doesn't really matter what camera you have as long as you know your camera and you know what you're doing with your camera, you can get excellent results. When you start working on your raw photo, you have to have a vision. You have to have some idea what you want. If you don't have any idea what you want and you just start to pushing those sliders all over the place or apply some presets and at the same you hope that uh, a preset or some magic slider setting will save your picture. I don't think it's going to work at all. The image quality is good with all these apps and in the end I don't think uh, minor differences in noise levels or sharpening matter that much if your picture has some valuable content to the viewer. I'd like to conclude that in my opinion Lightroom is suitable for those who appreciate fully manual raw workflow. DxO Photolab offers by far the best lens corrections, best noise suppression and best detail. Luminar Neo in my opinion is the most amateurish of these apps, but you can still get decent results also with that if you know how to use it. And then there is the price of course, but that is so very personal that I'm not going to comment that. I'll put the links down below, so please find out uh, what options are available and what might work for you. My opinion is that all these apps are worth the money, as long as the app works for you and you like to use it. I hope you enjoyed this, I hope this was helpful, and if it was, please do consider buying me a cup of coffee, there's a link down below for that, if you don't live in Finland. Thank you so much and uh, I'll see you again in the next one.